So, uh, tell me a little bit about your life before you joined the fab school. What were you up to? You know, uh, what got you interested in doing fabrication? Oh, okay. Um, to be honest, I was up to nothing good. Um, I joined the army pretty young. Um, I thought my career was going to, you know, be a long time in there, but I got injured. So, uh, I did my research, see what I wanted to do after the military. And I hit up some guy, he was doing some cool welding. He's called the Fabrication Series on YouTube. He wasn't that popular back then, so I hit him up and I asked him, oh, how do you weld like that? He just told me, go to the fab school, don't go to UTI, don't waste your money. So went to the fab school and to be honest, it paid off. Ever since I was little, just doing fab work with my dad or friends or whatever, I'm big into rock crawling. So just taking it to the next level of being faster, more efficient, just more quality work being put down. So before coming to the school, I was in IT and kind of tech repair before this. Um, kind of my interest started from just basic car project stuff. Uh, bought a spoiler for my car from a friend who supposedly by the company they said they designed it their own design and it's specific to them, but it just turned out to be a Chinese clone of another wing for a completely different car. I took that as an opportunity to kind of like learn CAD a little bit and after kind of getting into that it maybe kind of looking to avenues of possibly doing as a career or just going into school for it a bit more. Um, I've always kind of been into metal fabrication. My dad's always been big in it since I was a kid. So I've kind of learned from him throughout the, couple, the few years that I've been able to go out in the shop with him. Um, I have my own like metal fabrication business at home. I have a plasma table and you know, a lot of tools there, but I just kind of wanted to further into the CNC side of things like the laser press break, that kind of stuff that I can't just get my like access to at home. So that was the biggest reason that I wanted to come here. And then as well as like the 3D printing side of stuff, I don't really know much about that or I didn't before coming and now I do, so. I did uh, nine years in the Navy as an electronics technician. I always rode motorcycles and fixed them on the side and I just want to be able to uh, come in and design parts that are better than the, the brands that are making them. I worked in a couple off-road shops working you know, from small parts, uh, specific parts on the vehicle, to doing race prep, uh, Alumacraft race cars. Um, and from there, I just wanted to learn more and be able to do a lot more. Uh, res restoring cars with my dad as well, that's what got me in interested in the design portion of it. And from there, I started looking around and was like, let's go here, let's go to fab school. I had a buddy that was into like fabrication stuff. Um, so he kind of like got me into it. But uh, before that, I was doing like other jobs. I was working at the fire department, um, doing uh, construction, just like kind of like labor work too. But uh, yeah, no, and then I just started researching schools. Um, college wasn't really like working out for me either. Like, I hate school. But this school is different, <laughs> obviously. I'm from El Salvador. I was studying electrical engineering, but I wasn't sure about it or happy what I was doing, so I started looking for something else and I found this school. My first impression of the school was just the amount of like equipment and the, like, the quality of equipment and, and instructors' knowledge base as well. Um, I can, there's nowhere, no question that somebody doesn't have an answer for at this school, so it's, I'm definitely going to miss all the instructors and, and, being having, and having access to all this great equipment. I think the biggest thing that I was kind of impressed with is just how like everyone is just cool with each other. Like we all kind of mess around with each other all day. Like even just like coming in, everyone like no one treats you like a stranger. Like you're pretty much immediately like family, which I thought was pretty cool. And it makes it a lot easier to come in and like you just enjoy being here. A lot of times like 
I don't leave at four o'clock. I'll hang out and stay after and just keep doing stuff, hanging out with everyone. Uh, my progression month after month was very noticeable. I started off the course with maybe a couple days experience on the computer. Now, tell me to do something on the computer, I, I got your back. My progress was definitely was getting better each month uh, from doing 2D sketches, then I, go, I went to the 3D modeling and was like, now is every step was easier uh, and now I feel pretty confident with my skills. My favorite project in the course was probably the shovel or the 3D printer enclosure just because there was a lot of uh, parts that took to make it put together and uh, they were the extended projects, they were pretty involved. Probably the vice, hands down, you know, I got to spend a lot of time out there on the Haas Mini Mill, machining that with Laura, learning all the code, so that's where I learned the most and that one became my favorite project easily. My favorite project would be um, the nightstand that I made, uh, as well as my battery box. I feel that, you know, having come to this course that I'm ready to be successful in, in, in the job, you know, sector, or, uh, and yeah, I feel very well prepared to start my career after leaving here. I would definitely say the manual lathe and the manual mill, just because, I don't know, I always kind of watched machining YouTube videos online and it seemed like a very satisfying and interesting thing to kind of learn and get some skill behind. Uh, plus, in terms of like making your own parts or understanding projects that you're working on yourself, it doesn't hurt to have an understanding of if it's possible to manufacture, possible to make. Uh, because it's easy to design something, it's harder to make it so it's feasible to be produced and not going to cost $5,000 for just a single set. The most challenging was um, sitting next to Kiko the whole time. You know, this guy talks a lot, but at the end of the day, you know, I love that guy. I wish nothing but the best for him. Learning how to use a computer, <laughs> that was the hardest part once we started getting all the buttons figured out and all that stuff, but I'd say like a month in, something just kind of clicked, you know? Just one day it was just like, everything kind of came together and where everything goes and like the SOLIDWORKS program and all that kind of stuff. Oh, beginning of class, the 2D sketches. Like, I think I just went home right after and went to sleep for like three hours. Because just learning the program in the first place, like there's so much new information that it was just like overload of so many different techniques and Curtis is just like killing it. He's just like eating a sandwich and drinking his coffee and just like, like it's nothing. And I think that was just like a big shock of like how much experience they have and like how much they can like teach us. What's the first thing you're gonna print on your uh, printer? Uh, probably some model parts for race cars. So make it out of plastic versus aluminum, get cheaper. So the, and there's, um, here I got my sky drive right here. So I'm going to put my sky drive. Oh, this is really important right here. You need this right here for 3D printing. And this is your plate for your sky drive. So just like that. And you got your service manual right here. You guys are awesome. Uh, What's the first thing you're going to print on this? I'm going to print an AR-15. Um, a Warhammer figurine. <laughs> I'm gonna print a girlfriend finally. <laughs> a dick butt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're making my job harder, man. <laughs> Why a dick butt? We're uh, doing all our offsets and setting all our tools to make vices. We're setting up the machine to do the, the actual jaw that grabs the parts right now with the vices out of the stock. So we'll be running all of these first. All the first off, then we'll switch up our setup and do the second off, and then we'll move on to the next part. This whole center section is going to be gone. It gets milled pretty much down across and all the way through. So this is the base of the vise, and then uh, we'll load that up in and cut it all out, and then go from there. I think that like coming out of this school, especially like the digital design side of things, you have 
enough that you could go start somewhere, even if they don't use SolidWorks, any CAD program for that matter, you could jump in and learn it pretty quickly and be you know, on pace with everyone else that's already working. I'm gonna start my own business. It's called Arch Fabrication. I'm starting it right now. Okay. I'm doing tell, it right now. So if you're needing designs or anything, I can design something for your, your camera right now to where you can like, you know, move it around the room and everything. I can make it like, I can design anything you want, man. Anything that comes off the top of your head, I can design a whole spaceship, a spaceship shuttle for you yeah, with, cool. a, with a Costco inside of it if you want. Uh, the type of job I'm looking for when I'm done with school is definitely uh, gonna stay with the computer side. I did take FOF, which I love welding, I love fabrication, but I have a kid now, and if I could stay home as much as possible and work remotely, that would be that would be the best for me. Um. Well, right after graduation, we're going to be racing KOH uh, in Johnson Valley. We'll be out there for about a month. Then we're going to head home. I'm going to go work for the race shop that I was working for before I came here. Not a really uh, specific career path. Uh, I'm not really going for a career path. I'm going towards my ultimate goal, which is building a racetrack and building multiple businesses to support the racetrack. I plan going through the uh, fabrication side fundamentals of fabrication after I graduate, go through that for six months, and then move back to Reno and hopefully open up business. Starting out, we we'll just get a, a uh, laser plasma jet and doing uh, sheet metal parts, uh, building bike parts. It would be nice to get a CNC and be able to do billet parts as well. That's where the real money is, I feel like. There's a company in my hometown of Ramona, the, they're called Ramona Metalworks, and they actually just bought a CNC machine. I actually went with them to look at it, so I'm um, I have a pretty much a job lined up there to do welding, design, and machining, and some CNC laser cutting. So that's sort of got the dream job and went to the dream school. Here's the barbecue, and hoping to maybe laser cut some gears uh, with a chain that's going to attach to this floating barbecue that isn't coming up right now. But uh, that's basically the frame that I just have to adjust and be able to fit in there. But I have like a little crank handle and a stop to like raise and lower the grill. I want to do like different styles of it too, like maybe some that like don't have the, the gear in the chain and it's just like a, maybe like more of like a wood border around it. Um, I don't know, but uh, I want to make like a bunch of different kinds. What's that one, Pat? This one, 83 to 36 a year. You should definitely apply. Barbecues. You should definitely apply. <laughs> it's like a calling. It is. Yeah. He's already designed one, so <laughs> might as well keep going. Yeah. Maybe you just sell him the design. Maybe. Hey. Yeah. Uh, right now I'm doing a uh, 3D printing like, ramps for a skateboard, like little tech deck obstacles for kids. So uh, I just thought of a company I could create a bunch of obstacles real quick. So it's easy to come up with a bunch of ramps and stuff. So yeah. So you print any of them yet? Yeah, they're all printed actually at yeah, Source and Stuff today. So, uh, oh, so you're selling them? Yeah. Oh. So I started this since being in the class. <laughs> and then I just, the hardest part is getting the content done and like learning how to make the sales online through e-commerce, like showing people there's stuff here to buy. I can't just say one person, that's multiple people. Uh, if I do say one person, that would definitely, in DDM, that would be Curtis. Second in line, obviously Laura, she's our other instructor. But yes, my dad is a really big reason on why I, I stay motivated and I do what I have to do to survive and be successful. Of course, thanks Curtis and Laura for the plethora of information. Honestly, just being really cool instructors. Uh, I'd like to thank Nate. Uh, I just, he just let me pick his brain about different little bits and bobs that I've been working like on with my project. Well, Scott and Kevin, we're all here from Texas together, um, living in a camper, so you know that helps out a lot. 
the three of us. We ride here together every day, ride home together every day. Um, Curtis and Laura, they helped, I mean, more than I would have expected anything that I would, any question I have or anything. And they've been, you know, just like friends. They're not just like any old teacher that you have. I mean, I could call them up at any time and ask them a question, that kind of thing. So that's been pretty cool. Just hanging out with them in general is pretty cool. Yeah, I'm really stoked to have Curtis and Laura as our instructors. They were great. Uh, they went above and beyond what I expected as an instructor would do. And uh, you could tell they generally are in the right places, people as teachers in this place. So it's, yeah, I'm really stoked to have them. Uh, thank you to my DDM class of 2022-23. Been a fun time with you guys. Going to miss you all. Really made, really probably one of the best classes I've ever taken with you guys. So, the staff says thank you. Uh, special thanks to, to God, to my husband, um, and Curtis and Laura, my instructors, who were great and helped me get through this course. That's all. Well, persons-wise, the teachers, of course. I mean, all the classmates as well. I think uh, we all do kind of like motivate each other, you know, we check out our, our other projects and like, oh like, oh dude, like that project's sick, you know, you should do this to it, or like little changes and stuff like that, so having your classmates like motivate you, I think is a big thing. I don't think there's one thing or one person that helped me through, I think it was a combination of everybody from the students to instructors, um, they all helped me through, you know, their successes or their failures. And uh, I've learned from both ends of that, of that, and it's made me stronger. So it's not one thing, it's everything, actually. Yes, I would like to say thank you for my, my instructors. Uh, they were uh, pretty patient and friendly with me and teaching me all the techniques that they know. And my, my parents, the, uh, and my family, the, they were always there for me. Oh, yeah, I, want, I want to get a shout out to um, to Curtis. Um, thank you for everything. Um, you're the best. You know, one day I'm gonna be better than you, hopefully. Um, Laura, dye your hair again. Um, yeah. Hey, Sam. Hey, I love you, man. All right, I'm out, bro.